The Artemis Accords are a uh, set of principles, uh, it's not a treaty, uh, that the U.S. proposed um, and which has now seen a number of countries sign up to, um, not the Chinese, uh, not the Russians. But the idea is mostly to cover how are we going to deal with the moon, our closest celestial neighbor, um, especially as the U.S. prepares to return to the moon um, in all likelihood uh, with uh, the participation of other countries. Um, how do you want to do health and safety? Um, how do you, you know, what kinds of principles do you have about ownership within the context of the Outer Space Treaty, which says no one can claim an entire celestial body. Um, what kinds of rules might you have about things like intellectual property? Uh, so the Artemis Accords is an attempt to create among a group of the willing, um, a group of countries that are largely uh, similar in outlook. How do we want to deal with the moon as we start seriously thinking about first establishing long-term, maybe even permanent human presence, but also potentially lunar industrialization, whether it is mining, whether it is ore processing, uh, and also sharing information based on you know, scientific information, access to water on the moon. Um, you know, what principles might there be? Uh, the U.S. is clearly setting up a uh, international uh, code of conduct, if you will, um, and looking to see how the Chinese and the Russians respond. China basically is uncomfortable with a U.S.-led space order. And so under President Xi Jinping, they are very clear that they want to become the lead actor in space because becoming the lead actor in space enables them to become a lead actor in Earth as well. Given the important role that space is playing for all of us today, including our critical infrastructure. So in that context, what China has actually very clearly done is that it has established a separate alignment structure for lunar development. And this has been in the works for the last 20 years. So since 2000, actually since 1992, China has developed a human space program. But since 2002, China has very clearly articulated its ambitions for the moon. Now, in that context, what China has very critically done is that it has clearly articulated that it is not going to be a part of the Artemis Accords, uh, also because the U.S. Uh, government space agencies cannot collaborate with China because of the Wolf Amendment of 2011 that basically bans any state-to-state uh, -state space cooperation because of fears of technology transfer, intellectual property theft. That's the number one issue. The number two issue is that because of that, what China has articulated, for example, through the director of the Space uh, Law Center with the China National Space Administration, that the Artemis Accord is not really an international legal legislation and it's outside of the Outer Space Treaty. So they have already formulated their uh, negation of the treaty. Uh, now, Russia has basically uh, taken a stand even more stronger on the Artemis Accord. So unlike China, where the director made a point, it was not the China National Space Administration, in Russia, Roscosmos Director General came out and said that Russia is against the Artemis Accord. Russia is against the privatization of space because the Artemis Accord wants to encourage private companies to develop systems for lunar capability for the US and its partners. So Russia is against that. And Russia will actually pursue a very state-focused, state-funded lunar program. And you can see that happen with it joining the China Memorandum of Understanding for the Moon. So both China and Russia have, in their own way, uh, articulated their, uh, up their what, what would you say, their uh, contrary opinion on the Art Artemis Accord or their challenge to the Artemis Accord. Now, have they signed the treaty in terms of the uh, lunar space resource development? Not yet. The Artemis Accord also is not a treaty as yet. It's an accord, and uh, we have the preamble to the accord. Uh, we still have, do not have the full accord, which I'm sure is in the making in consultation with partner nations. So in the final analysis, I will say that when you look at space resource development today, you can see that there are very clear alignments that are forming. One is a China-led Russia partnered 
lunar development capacity. China has actually articulated goals for space-based solar power, asteroid mining. And I would say that the U.S. is actually starting to look like it's trying to catch up because the U.S. for long has had talked about these capacities but had not actually invested in these capacities by calling them science fiction. Uh, for example, space-based solar power. But now when you see feasibility studies and microwave beaming being demonstrated at a very low level, but demonstrated, suddenly there is an in interest also because China is basically investing seriously in this capacity. So it's a very interesting world of space that we live in today. 